Good morning and a very warm welcome to our friends from both Craigie Simonton and Presswick South Parish Church. And of course to any friends or visitors who may have joined us. Wherever you are watching or listening to this service, it's really wonderful to have you here with us, worshipping. And we hope you enjoy your worship together. We come together to praise God. A God who heals a broken hearted and binds up their wounds. A God who created the heavens and the earth and calls us each by name. A God who sustains the humble and in whose unfailing love we place our hope. So let us come and worship God in our first hymn, which reminds us that we are all part of God's worldwide family. Let all the world in every corner sing. Our first reading today is from the New Testament, from the Gospel according to Luke, reading from chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. And in this reading, the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. And Jesus teaches them what we now know to be the Lord's Prayer. As usual, our reading will be brought to us by Anne. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me, the door is already locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your boldness he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you, for everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, 
How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Thank you, Anne, for that reading. I'm sure many of us have been in the position when we're driving along the motorway and the gantry above us flashes the 40 miles per hour sign. I know I've been there often and there's one occasion I remember very well. I was driving to Falkirk to speak at Karen Vale House at a BBE conference and I was stuck in slow moving traffic and I looked up at the gantry sign which said slow 40 miles per hour and I thought to myself you know that would be nice as I looked at the dashboard and saw I was trailing along at 15 miles per hour. The wind, the sleet, the rain relentlessly battering against the car and I was in a traffic jam going nowhere fast. I wondered what was causing the hold up and then I heard on the radio the story that the lorry had shed its load just up the road and the traffic man was advising drivers to find an alternative route. And that was all right for those who knew the area, but unfortunately, I didn't. And there wasn't any sat-nav fitted to the car to come to my help. I began to worry that I'd never make the conference in time, and I decided I needed to get off the motorway, call the gentleman who'd asked me to take part in the conference, and explain the situation to him. There was no way I was ever going to get there before it was time for the conference to end. Finally, I found a way off the motorway and found a shopping centre where I could park and call him. And to be honest, I was really hoping he'd say, that's okay, don't bother, just turn around and go home. But to my surprise, he didn't say that. He asked me where I was and said to wait there and he'd be there in 15 minutes and show me an alternative route. I waited and sure enough, he arrived and took me along some very difficult back roads to reach Carinvale House. We were just in time for a hot coffee before I was due to speak. The traffic jam was no problem to him. He knew his way around and was able to help me find my way to Karen Vale. You know, life often throws all kinds of blockages in our way, and we often feel we have no idea how we're going to get through them. We often think about giving up, as I did on that night. But that memory reminds me that I don't need to know the way. All I need to know is someone who can show me the way. The past 11 months have been some of the most difficult challenges I've ever had to face in terms of my work, my personal life, and of course, my faith. Being separated from loved ones, from friends and family has been very difficult for us all. And it wouldn't be surprising if at some point during that time, we've all had the idea of just giving up on these difficult times. Or maybe you've thought about giving up on difficult family members, or the idea of seeing your friends again, or maybe even the idea of us ever being back in church. And if, like me, you've been in that dark and difficult place, remember, we don't need to know the way out. Because we know someone who does, our Father in heaven. And how do we access his help? Well, Jesus tells us in our reading today from Luke's Gospel, we just need to pray. We just need to contact the one who knows his way around or through anything. After all, God specialises in making a way where there is none. As Jesus reminds us in our reading, ask and you will receive. That doesn't mean to say that we'll receive the answer that we want. 
or the one that we expect. But even if it's not what we desired, we know that God has some better plan for us and can trust his love and his wisdom. Accessing God's help is easy, but following it might not be so easy. But if we do follow it, and we have the faith and the love of God, then we will find a way around or through anything that life can throw at us. Amen. Let us join together now in prayer. Let us pray. God of wonder, creator of all that we perceive, the one who made the world come into being, who brought light into the darkness, who walked with people thousands of years ago and still walks with us now. Thank you for loving us, no matter who we are or where we are. Loving God, you are our constant in a world of change and we come before you this day in prayer and admiration. And we pray today for your help to make us better friends, better family members, to make us more loving, more caring, and more generous. Help us as we try to follow you and live as Jesus showed us. Help us to make a better world and a better life for everyone. Lord God, we ask for guidance in a troubled world where pain and disease are commonplace. Help us to love our neighbour, to care for the widows and the sick. Help us to live out our faith and show the same compassion that Jesus showed. Eternal God, we come before you to confess our sins of omission and commission. All too often we fail to live up to your expectations. We stray from your path and we become lost in the darkness of this world. Forgive us, Lord, and lead us back into the fold. Strengthen and encourage us to live as you instruct us. Help us to be carriers of your message and instruments of your mission. Help us to be good and honest followers of Jesus. Strengthen through the Spirit that guides us today as we seek to do your work. Living God, we come before you to give thanks for your grace, to give thanks for your eternal love, so that we may follow you and though we may not always succeed, we pray that you will guide us ever onwards. And all these prayers we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us follow along with the words and music of our second hymn, Jesus' Hands Were Kind Hands.
Our second reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, reading from verse 29 to 39. And in this short passage, we hear about how Peter turns to Jesus and asks for his help in curing his mother-in-law. And then we go on to hear about Jesus' wider healing ministry. Mark 1, verse 29 to 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. And Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons. But he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he travelled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Amen. On July the 5th, 1948, the then Minister of Health, Nye Bevan, introduced the National Health Service. A service that was aimed at catering for people's medical needs from cradle to grave. And for over 70 years now, that's what it's attempted to do. It's been the envy of the world for a number of years. The National Health Service is one of the success stories of our nation and society, a venerable institution to be proud of and to seek to secure the future for future generations. All too often we take it for granted. We forget how fortunate we are to have access to a large range of healthcare professionals. It's not until you're unfortunate enough as I was some five years ago, to take ill on holiday and to see how much other people have to pay to access services we have for free on the NHS. And yes, there have been a number of changes over the past 50 years that mean access to the doctor isn't what it was. I have a very good friend whose father was a doctor and she tells me of the times she remembers when at two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning the phone would ring her mother would get out of bed and go downstairs to answer the phone and she would take the details whilst her father got dressed gathered up his bag and went out to make the house call nowadays it's very rare for our GP to cover the evening and night time hours. Instead, our calls go through to NHS 24 or NHS Direct, and the doctor who just happens to be on call is the one who will attend, and it won't necessarily be your own GP. Although to be fair, other than that, accessing our GPs has pretty much remained the same over the years. That is, until COVID-19 burst onto the scene. The advent of COVID-19 necessitated a change in the way we do many things, including the way we access our National Health Service, and in particular, how we access our GPs. Nowadays, most of our interaction with the local GP 
is by telephone or maybe even a video call. The days of the face-to-face -face appointment with the GP or the nurse are for now at least on hold. The need to protect our healthcare workers and for social distancing makes it difficult to have these face-to-face -face appointments. However, from personal experience, the one thing that has not changed in the NHS is the dedication and commitment of our healthcare workers to help their patients. To them, this is not just a job, it's a vocation. I have witnessed firsthand and seen on TV the incredible number of hours some healthcare workers have had to endure over the past 11 months. Despite their own weariness, their exhaustion, and their own need for a time of peace and rest, many have continued to provide care and put their patients first. They put helping others in need above their own interest. And that is what we see from Jesus in our reading in Mark's Gospel today. Jesus performed a miracle for Peter's mother-in-law. And soon word got out and people came from all over the town to be healed by Jesus. The passage tells us a lot about Jesus. It tells us he was willing to heal people whether there was only a few people present, like in Peter's home, or whether there were large numbers of people present, like in the synagogues in the neighbouring villages. Jesus didn't heal people for the prestige or to show off his power. No, Jesus healed to help people. And it also shows us that Jesus was never too tired to help people. The needs of others always took precedence over his own need for rest and peace. And there's also one other unique thing about Jesus that no other healer or doctor since has been able to do. Jesus healed by the power of touch or word. There were no incantations, no magic elixirs, no magic spells or strange acts to perform. Jesus ignored all the paraphernalia of the magic of the day and with a simple gesture, a simple touch or just a word of authority and power, Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law and many others. To Jesus, a miracle was not a means of increasing his prestige or demonstrating his power over others, nor was it a laborious and disagreeable task that he needed to do. No, to Jesus, healing was instinctive and he performed his miracles purely to help people who needed his help. This, of course, meant he was always in demand and was constantly sought out by others, which in the end for anyone, and yes, even Jesus, was very tiring. However, conscious as he was of his own weariness and exhaustion, he was even more conscious of the cries of human need and suffering. So when they came to him, Jesus made himself available and healed them. Jesus physically touched people and they were healed according to such stories as the ones we read today. But for Jesus, it wasn't just a matter of healing the physical body. For him, the body and soul could not be separated. A personal encounter with others went far beyond the physical healing. There was also a spiritual, emotional and social healing taking place, which in many ways was far more important. The encounter with Jesus and the divine 
not only healed their bodies, but healed their souls as well. And we today can still experience that transformational power of Jesus in our lives, whether in big ways or in many small and repeating ways. And having experienced it, we can be like the disciples after they too experienced it. Because at this time, in this particular episode, the disciples hadn't known Jesus for very long. But still they felt they could take their troubles to him. For Peter, it was perfectly natural for him to speak to Jesus about his mother-in-law's illness. It was perfectly natural for him to ask Jesus to heal his mother-in-law. It took me a long time to learn the truth that the disciples gathered relatively quickly. That at the very essence of Christian life is the fact that as one of my favourite hymns says, take it to the Lord in prayer. The disciples learned early and throughout their time with Jesus, they developed the habit of taking their troubles to Jesus and asking for his help. In our society today, which in the last 12 months has endured many challenges and changes, and where many have been left isolated and bereft of physical and social contact with others, we understand more than we did before now how important personal encounter is for us and for our whole community. So today, we need to recognise the need to make ourselves more available to others, just as Jesus did. Whether that's in a phone call or a video message, or by whatever means we can, we need to allow God to work through us and to help us care for others in a positive and sensitive manner. In other words, we need to be more like Jesus and to always make ourselves available to help those in need. We also need to learn to take things to Jesus in prayer. But we also need to learn that prayer will not do the work for us, but it will strengthen us for the task that needs to be done. Jesus is the perfect example for us in how we should always be willing to help those in need. The task of helping others in their time of need is a task for us all. And through our faith, we know Jesus will always be there to strengthen and encourage us so that we can achieve the task that he sets out for us. To love and to help our neighbours when they're most in need. Amen. Let us once again join in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for all that we are and all that you have given us. As we come before you in worship today, we give thanks for your work in the world, for all those who have dedicated their lives to caring for others, for those who work tirelessly and thanklessly, we ask for your blessing upon them and that we too may care for those around us and all who cross our path. Lord, we pray today for all your people watching or listening to this service at home or wherever they are around the world, that they will seek to follow you, to love and to care for each other, that they will know that they are loved for who they are, just as you made them. Caring God, we pray for those who are struggling with ill health in whatever form it takes. For those who worry about themselves, their families, their finances, their jobs. Hold them close to you, O oh God. Guide them through their difficult times. 
Bring healing and peace to all your children who suffer. Almighty God, we pray for your church here in Craigie Simonton and Presswick South, and across the whole of Scotland, and of course around the world, in these difficult times when it seems even harder to carry out your mission. Lord, grant us the wisdom to see your vision, to know what is needed and what is to be discarded, that we might more fully serve you and each other. Lord, for the years now you have been calling us out of our buildings, out of our neatly ordered routines and rituals, back to you, the God of simplicity, a God who never minds a bit of chaos, who finds a way through the mess, who turns crisis on its head. So here we are, O God, without all our usual props, without all the barriers that turn people away and blind us to the needs of the world. Open our eyes, O God, to see you. Open our ears to hear you calling us to find new ways to love and serve you as we love and serve each other. Lord God, all these prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final hymn today reminds us that if we place our faith in God, everything will be all right. Through the love of God our Saviour, all will be well. Now I'd like to thank you for joining me this morning from wherever you are in the world. And once again, can I express my sincere thanks to Arthur and Anne for their invaluable help in pulling this service together. It's very much appreciated. And can I wish Tosh a speedy recovery and hopefully we'll be, he'll be back with us soon. Finally, can I just remind people to share with others how to access our services via the YouTube channel or via the telephone. And whilst the current restrictions continue, I pray that you all stay safe, take care, and hopefully we'll see all each other again very soon. And now let us close with a blessing. As we go from here, may we seek ways by which to look to and care for each other, 
as well as those who need to know love and care at this time. And as we do, may God lead us, Jesus teach us, and the Holy Spirit guide us. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen.